And here our next video, we're going to talk about the magnetic spin quantum numbers. Remember, there are four quantum numbers, N, L, M sub L, and finally the fourth one, M sub S. There we go. Now, N, of course, stands for the energy levels. That's the principal quantum number. L is the angular momentum quantum number. M sub L is the, uh, what we call the magnetic quantum number, and M sub S is the spin quantum number the orbital spin quantum number. And what that means is that electrons, they are particles as much as they are waves. They behave like waves, but they're still particles. They have mass, they have volume. And yes, they do spin on their axis. So an electron can either spin like this, that, that's called spin up, or it can look like this, and they, then they're called spin down. And notice, since the electrons are negatively charged, and these particles are then rotating around, some sort of current situation appears then, in such a way that we do have a magnetic field set up with the north here and the south there, or either the south there and the north over there, depending upon if the electrons are spin up or spin down. And of course, those magnetic fields that interact with any other magnetic field that may be present, and so therefore there would be a slight energy difference in the direction of the spin of the electron, depending upon the external influence of the magnetic field. And so two electrons, therefore, can exist in the very same location if one is spin up and the other one is spin down. It is this property that allows two electrons per orbital. So let's assume, we, let's say we have a, um, a p orbital. So let's say this is the z-axis. We have a p orbital like that. And yes, we could have two electrons in the p orbital only provided if one is spin up and the other one is spin down. If they're both spin up or both spin down, they could not exist at the same time in the same orbital. So it's the fact that there's a property of the electron where they can be spinning up or spinning down, where they can be spinning in opposite directions that allow two electrons to exist in each orbital. So for example, the p orbitals, there's three of them in total, right? So we have another orbital in the y direction and a third orbital in the x direction. So because of that, in each orbital, you can have a total of two electrons, again, provided they spin in opposite directions. And so the, what we find then is that each electron is now associated with four quantum numbers. The electron is associated in what energy level it's at. It's associated with what angle of momentum it can have. It's associated in what direction the angle of momentum can be pointing to. And then it's associated with the fact that it's either spinning up or spinning down. And this last property, the spin quantum number, allows the electrons to double up in each orbital. They can only coexist in the same orbital if they're in opposite spin. And so there's the fourth of the four quantum numbers defining the existence of electrons and how they behave in the orbits and orbitals around the nuclei of the atoms. One more thing. Notice the plus and minus one half all the way down the column here. Well, if we go to the first energy level, we know that the angular momentum quantum number can only have a value of zero, and the magnetic quantum number can only have value of zero, and we assign a value of plus and minus one half to the spin directions of the electron. Notice that for each case of each combination of the three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, we have two possible situations for the electron, spin up or spin down, which we indicate as a plus one half and a minus one half. So for each combination of quantum numbers here, there will always be two electrons. Every one of these combinations represent a single orbital. So this would be 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, negative 1. And if you like, I can put in the rest of the numbers. So that would be 2, 2, uh, 1, 1. Oh, I put it too high there. So you can see that for each combination of quantum numbers, each one of those represents a single orbital. And for each single orbital, you can have two electrons, one spin up, one spin down, and that's the significance of the enumeration of the uh, spin quantum number. That's how we notate that. All right, we'll put a summary of that together in a later video, but at least this way you understand what the fourth quantum number stands for and why we have it as a, a what the significance is of that quantum number.